Billie Holiday says that she hated singing her iconic song, Strange Fruit. Southern trees bear strange fruit, blood on the leaves and blood at the root. Black bodies swinging in the southern breeze, strange fruit hanging from those poplar trees. But, says Holiday, I had to sing that song because it reminded me of my pops, who died of lung disease because he was turned away from hospital for being black. One of the critical tasks of the United Reformed Church at the moment is to confront the legacies of the transatlantic slave trade. And I want to suggest that we view the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine worldwide through the lens of that legacy. The United Reformed Church has dozens of international partnerships with Reformed and other churches around the world. Intrinsic to our self-identity is this commitment to seeking justice for all. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails, says the author of the book of Corinthians. And we as Christians seek to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly, according to the prophet Micah. So then, in light of our global partnerships and our sacred calling and duty to do justice, I'm going to try and answer the question, what does justice look like in the worldwide rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine? In late March 2021, Kenya announced its plan to vaccinate only 30% of its 48 million residents against COVID-19. Why? Why so few? Why do people under 50 not get it? Why do people not involved in healthcare and tourism not get the vaccine? In March 2021, 75% of all vaccine administered worldwide were given in only 10 countries. Not a single dose had been given in over 100 countries. It will be 2023 or maybe 2024 before there is widespread vaccination. By the end of this year, one in 10 of people in the poorest countries will have access to the, to the vaccine only. So back to our question, what does justice look like for the global rollout of COVID vaccines. The European Union, United States and Israel, Canada, they have all pre-purchased enough vaccines to inoculate their population up to six times over. They also bought their vaccines at pre preferential prices. The EU, for example, pays about two pounds for the AstraZeneca vaccine, while South Africa is charged, you guessed it, five pounds for the same drug. What does justice look like? The United States has ordered about 300 million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine. That's enough for nearly every single one of their population. But you, you, this, you must understand the US has already ordered sufficient of the, of the Moderna and Pfizer vaccine for every American already. So instead of freeing up the AstraZeneca doses for other people in the world, well, it's given 4 million to Canada and to Mexico. Tedros Ghebreyesus from the World Health Organization says that this current rollout strategy, by which I mean that the rich are given them first while the poor just have to wait their turn, this is a catastrophic moral failure. The WHO has tried to respond by initiating the COVAX program. This is designed to oversee the distribution of vaccines to poor countries. But you won't be surprised to hear that rich countries have been very slow in their support of COVAX. Some, like Canada, have uh, stand accused, in fact, of actively undermining the work of COVAX, making scarce doses even scarcer. Pharmaceutical companies, like Moderna, declined to join COVAX altogether. Uh, well, it charges the US about $30 for its shots and the EU about $36. So no worries, it will ensure that it makes billions in profits for a company that's only 11 years old and has never made a profit until this year. Pfizer, on the other hand, has done slightly better. It has committed 40 million doses to, to the COVAX program. What does justice really look like? This strategy for worldwide rollout, in other words, the rich first and the poor last, is completely self-defeating, 
because leaving the vaccine in large swathes of the population only increases the chances of variations uh, arising that could render the rest of the vaccines really ineffective. Sharing the vaccines globally could prevent 61% of all deaths. There are Russian and Chinese and other vaccines, but the UK Foreign Minister Dominic Raab says he would prefer African countries not to get help from China or Russia, but instead rather to wait, quote unquote, for Western countries to be done. Even worse, India and South Africa's request to the World Trade Organization to waive the intellectual property rights so that those countries in the Global South can manufacture their own well, this request has been denied. Why? Are we to really accept that the profitability of pharmaceutical companies is more important than people's lives? I ask you to imagine, how would you feel if you were one of the millions of people for whom there is no clear vaccination plan? Many of our fellow Christian brothers and sisters in Africa, in South America, and in Bangladesh, well, they don't need to imagine they have been abandoned. They have been condemned to the detritus of the international uh, agreed system, says Kenya activist Nanjala Nyambola. Here at the intersection of cruel profiteering and woefully mediocre in national and international governance, here are, is human life. We are not abstract figures or statistics. We are people with families and hopes, hopes for our future that are being deliberately undermined and endangered by our Western governments playing politics with our lives. But ours is not a demand for pity, she goes on. We demand justice, promises to donate doses from vaccines after all the rich people have been vaccinated. Well, that's not justice. Placing profit before human life. Well, that's not justice. Refusing to share technology with drug manufacturers in the global south, well, that's not justice. Clinging desperately to intellectual property rights in the face of a global pandemic, that is not justice. So, why is there scarcity of doses? You may rightly ask. Well, this is a question that was asked over 20 years ago by the, the Treatment Action Campaign, while millions of people were dying from HIV and AIDS while the pharmaceutical companies refused to allow the manufacture of gen generic drugs and antiretrovirals. You see, the global pharmaceutical system is predicated on monopolies. Drugs are patented for 20 years, which means that companies and countries may not produce those drugs. Additionally, the know-how, the blueprints or the recipes are not shared. Though I'm delighted to say that some rogue scientist with a conscience at Stanford University has reverse engineered the mRNA vaccine from Moderna and Pfizer and has made these available for free online. What does justice look like? What can we as the church do? Our United Reformed Church Commitment for Life partner, Global Justice Now, says first we as the church can and must turn the full weight of our moral anger to address these pharmaceutical monopolies in order to support a just rollout of vaccines. We can do so in three ways. One, we can offer our overwhelming support for COVAX and call on our governments to fully, and I mean fully, support the WHO efforts to distribute vaccines more widely. Secondly, we can call on our government to support the WHO COVID-19 Technology Access Pool. Launched in May 2020, this access pool brings together vaccines, technologies, testing kits, treatments and data all into one shared space. It then facilitates the licensing to manufacturers and to countries who want to make these vaccines. To date, no pharmaceutical company has joined this group, and so we must compel them to do so. In addition, only 40 countries have joined the COVID-19 technology access pool, and no points for guessing whether the UK or the USA and other rich countries have joined. We must call on them to do so immediately. Three, we must call on the World Trade Organization to suspend global rules on the patents on treatments for COVID-19. Even the Pope wants this. 
A patent suspension, or preferably even a ban, would break the monopolies and open up vaccine manufacture for, for the Global South and anybody who wants to make them. Because you must remember the Global South already has the manufacturing capacity to make these drugs, but they are simply being prevented from doing so. We as the church must not allow this ongoing legacy of economic slavery. We can and must be Billy Holiday for today, casting light on the slavery that we see all around us. We must sing a song of protest against the system that demands the sacrifice of black bodies as the strange fruit that hangs from the branches of the pharmaceutical profit tree. Because this is what justice could look like.